I've been asked to say a few words, so uh, I'm going to do exactly that. Steadfast, loyal, selfless, dutiful, dauntless, demonstrative, humble, gentle, Herculean, <laughs> trustworthy, exceptional, United States Marine, mischievous, <laughs> and my absolute favorite, which my wife actually used to describe him, resolute. Now, I'm sure quite a few of you are going to have to go home and Google some of those words. <laughs> Because we don't use them very often anymore to describe people. I agonize for days to figure out how to do him justice. And I realize that I simply cannot. Resolute means admirably purposeful Determined and unwavering. And that really describes him. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Andre. Uh, I've been a friend of Chuck's for 25 years. Um, we met in our teens when Chuck was that skinny. <laughs> had what looked like a six-inch tall kid-and-play filly. Really, he did at one point have hair, I swear. Um, and he drove a bright yellow Firebird. I have known him that long. I don't remember how we met. Chuck tells a story about a girl in a psych ward, which knowing my past may actually be pretty correct. Um, but I can tell you that over the years, we got to know each other very, very well. Um, over the years, he became my family. Over the years, he added to my life tremendously. You know, I had a really nice outline. <laughs> Not sure I'm going to be able to follow it. Um, so I... I I want to apologize ahead of time. Um, I have a slight case of ADD. Welcome to my wife's world. Um, please try and follow along. You know, as I agonized over this, I really thought, how do I best present him? How do I tell you people what he was and what he meant? And again, for days, I've, I've been going through this, I've been writing stuff, I've been trying to figure it out. <clears throat> and then someone that was very close with him last night gave me a few words of wisdom and said, well, everybody that's going to be there knows him. And everybody that's going to be there loved him. And that took a little bit of that weight off of my shoulders. So... <clears throat> Hold on, I've got to turn the page a little bit. You know, all of those fancy words kind of to summarize them, he was that very rare individual that was quiet and peaceful, had a very gentle soul, was very giving, very loving. But that was coupled with the capability of when the situation dictated, he was capable 
of judiciously employing violence to protect others. And that's a very rare set of traits in one body. You know, I know in today's world that may not be the most politically correct thing, yet looking out amongst a lot of the people here, I think people understand that that's a very necessary thing. I really wanted to bring a couple funny examples. Unfortunately, a lot of them aren't really appropriate for mixed company. <laughs> um, really, they're just not. And, and when I struggled to try and impart how much he meant to me in particular, an example came to mind. Um, about a month ago, my 13-year-old German Shepherd died. Phenomenal dog, loyal to a fault, wonderful, affectionate, fierce protector of my children. He was amazing. And everybody told me, oh, it's okay if you cry. And I didn't, send, I didn't shed a single tear. In fact, I really started to worry that I had become too hardened. I really kind of started wondering about my own humanity, you know? Who doesn't cry when their dog dies, right? I have not been able to hold it together. I have lost it on numerous occasions. You know, I'm a man that has seen a lot of violence, a lot of death, um, a lot of gore, and walked right through it, kind of shook it off. Can't shake this one off. Can't do it. You know, um, for those who know me, I'm, I'm really not good at following rules, uh, doing things the way I'm supposed to. Um, my wife actually told me to put my cigar away, and I promptly ignored her. Um, I'm probably going to violate protocol, but there are, there are two people that I want to address specifically in the audience. One for me and one for Chuck. To Chuck's father, I wanted to say thank you so very much for my amazing friend. You know, my wife and I are raising three boys, and, and I often wonder, did I say enough? Did I do enough? Was I too hard on? Did I take enough time? Because unless I somehow got shortchanged, they don't come with instruction manuals at the hospital. You know, they don't give you a little list of things to do. Um, so you kind of fumble along in the dark and do the best you can. And my philosophy has always been, what you get as a final product is really a testimony of what kind of father you were. And I can tell you that if my three boys end up half the man that Chuck was, I will have knocked it out of the park. I will have absolutely done my job. Your son brought a tremendous amount of laughter and warmth to my life. The hardest part of last week was coming home and having to sit them down and tell them that the man they utterly adore wasn't coming back. The second person I want to address, Lana, honey, I want to say a couple things to you and I hope you remember them, okay? I tend to look at things differently I'll tell you the things that everybody else will tell you, that your father's not really gone, he's here. I gotta be honest, I still feel him. I, I, I don't think he's totally gone. And he'll watch over you. But the other thing I wanna tell you is that sometimes life is difficult and it's hard. As you grow up, you'll figure that out. 
but your father left you a gift. How to deal with that. When times get hard, I want you to look down at your arm. It's made up of skin and blood and cartilage and bone. But when you really look at it, it's made up of cells. And in those cells are DNA, the very basic building blocks of what you are. Your father was the strongest man I have ever known. And he left you that strength in every single one of your cells. As you grow older, that will come out whether you like it or not. <laughs> sometimes it'll be a tremendous blessing. Sometimes you may not like it so much. <laughs> but it will come out. You know, um... The reason I thought of this, my father is, uh, he's a scientist, he's a nuclear physicist, he's a very soft, gentle man. And as I grew older, I started wondering why I behaved differently from other people, why I moved towards danger when everyone else ran away. Later on, I learned that my grandfather had fought in three wars, was decorated for the amount of Nazis he killed behind a rifle, and then it made sense because that DNA, those basic building blocks of what I am came out. They'll come out for you. He gave you that precious gift. To everyone else, I'm going to say this. I had a thought. Um, if you have somebody in your life that means something to you, let them know. Not tomorrow, but today. Because sometimes things happen and sometimes life is fleeting. I am very grateful that I don't have that regret. I'm not sure how or why it started, um, but two very heterosexual men telling each other they love each other may sound a little odd to the rest of you all, but it wasn't odd to us. Every time we talked, that came out every single time. Even the day he died, I talked to him a couple hours beforehand. I told him I loved him. He told me to tell my kids he loved him and my wife as well. I am going to miss him terribly. I am. But at the same time, for 25 years, I had him in my life. You know, and if you met him within an hour, you could figure out what he was all about. That goofy smile. The genuine warmth that you picked up really quickly. That quiet strength that you knew was there. I am very blessed to have had that in my life. You know, and I'm sure I'm going to cry. In fact, I'm pretty amazed I haven't broken down. Um, but I've alternated between being sad at the loss and then having a big grin on my face, thinking about some of the things we did and what he added to my life, to my kids' life, to other people's lives. And, uh, you know, I run that goofy Facebook page that people either seem to love or hate. Um, and I've gotten so many messages about him. People that didn't even know him. Um, he had a way of touching people like that. You know, I'm going to close with uh, the following thought. Um, as Chuck's, Chuck's sister mentioned, he was, uh, he was the master of the practical joke. He was the ultimate prankster. And uh, you know, those who don't know me know that I don't ever give up. I don't ever accept defeat. And yet many years ago, 
after a horribly embarrassing 45-minute attempt to convince Dick Cheney's nurse that I wasn't some sort of deviant who took weird pictures in bathrooms, um, I admitted defeat. I did. I said, I, I can't beat you, brother. There is no way. I'm not even going to try. And on those few times that, uh, that I think about it, he'd look at me quietly and go, you, you really want to get that started again? I go, ah, oh, no. Okay. Well, I had a thought as I'm doing all of this and preparing and racking my brain. I've driven out into the People's Republic of Maryland, a state that I'm not all that overly fond of. I have put on a suit. My three boys have put on suits. I have somehow managed to keep them semi-quiet. Um, I have walked into a church, which is slightly unusual for me. I made sure to wear rubber so she just, just in case. Um, and I am now up in front of what seems like 10,000 people doing something I don't necessarily enjoy. And the only thing I could think of was, damn it, he got me again. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to miss you, my friend, but thank you so much for being a part of my life. Thank you.